I would give anything, anything to make sure that my life was shored up for God. Right. Sold out, as Pastor Walker says in his new song, Sold Out. Mm -hmm. You've got to be sold out right. because you, you see what's happening in the world. Yeah. Deaths everywhere. everywhere. We're losing icons. Mm -hmm. We're losing athletes. We just lost another athlete on the other day, a boxer. We're losing people left and right. And if people don't realize what's going on, they're going to be left behind. They're going to miss it. They're going to miss it. After the accident had occurred, I was with Dad every day. Sure. I gave up my, own, my job, everything. We was there every day with him. When I say every day, every day, I lived in a hospital with him. So, you know, being there with him, coming up, maybe we didn't have, like, that extra strong relationship just then, you know, because he was always in the ministry, and, you know, I was younger, and basically being a, not the the mom or the dad of the house, I was something, because they were always out. <laughs> right. So I got stuck with my brothers. I didn't have a life till probably, like, 17, right. 18. Right. So me and my dad didn't really have that one-on-one -on -one thing because he was always in the ministry, but I kid you guys not out there that, uh, a time that me and dad spent in Kessler Institute when he, after the cert, after the accident happened, you know, we took him there to rehabilitate and mm -hmm. get better. Me and him built so much of a rapport with each other, whereas I knew when he wanted to eat. I knew what he didn't want to eat. Right. I knew when he didn't want to see certain people. And you, you know, look like the type of guy that would, whatever dad yeah. wanted, you would enforce it with no problem. I knew when he was playing possum and somebody coming in and <laughs> want to talk to him, this, that, and other, I knew a certain <laughs> look in his eyes that he was playing possum. So right. we built a great relationship. And I think God did that for a reason. Um, for what reason, I don't know. But it brought us so much yeah. closer together. It's like, and sometimes we was like two grumpy old men in the room together. <laughs> right, right. One of the... Uh, pieces of information that floated across my desk was that it was very, very expensive yes. to be at the hospital that he that he was at. Yes, at the rehab center, Kessler, he was there for about, well, about five months, and it was extremely expensive. Was there it a was, daily cost? Yeah, like it was $4,000 a day. That's what I, that's what I heard, $4,000 a day to, like to be in the rehab center that yes. he was at. And we wanted that for him because he deserved the best care and, and it was the it, that was the best hospital wow so we did uh we got with bishop jameson and all a lot of bishop frank white bishop blake yes and bishop gaylord we did concerts concerts and the saints in new york across the country they came together and, and did a great amount of money wow Praise for us god. to keep him there praise god whereas he was paralyzed from the neck down but he was always ask me are you all right and i'm like wow Am I all right? No, Dad, you all right. You know, this was a man that did everything right. for all of us. Um, cars, houses, clothes, money, whatever we needed. He made sure we was comfortable. And for him to be in that condition and still be concerned about, are we all right? That was a strong man. I mean, he had lost his wife of 39 years. He lost his grandson. He lost the ability to use his limbs and make his living and everything and still being concerned about people out there. We used to have people that would come to his room and they would want him to pray for them. You know, Reverend Wright, could you just pray for me? I'm having this problem, this, that, and other. You know, he couldn't move his hands or whatever, but I would pick his hand up and maybe lay it on the person's hand and he would still pray. So with wow. all of that, my father still had the compassion and the strength and the know-how to, to still carry out his ministry from his bed. Let me back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. He didn't know uh, at first or did he know that your mom had gone? No, he didn't. And um, when he first opened his eyes, that was what he said. He could kind of move his mouth a little bit, but with the broken jaws, you can he couldn't get no words out. But we heard him, we can clearly see, he said, where's your mother? No, he didn't. Yeah. We held my mom's body out for three weeks because mm. we didn't want to plan anything without his input. I got you. So anybody that was at my mom's funeral, my father planned the whole thing. Wow. From the hospital bed. Wow. And he was supposed to attend it, but it was it was a three hour drive and it would have been too risky for his health. For his health. So what what did you say when you finally told him? Well, we all gathered around the bed. It was this was the most emotional part of this whole ordeal. All the five brothers and all the sisters in law. Uh, and the grandkids, we gathered around the bed and said, Dad, 
mom didn't make it. Hmm. And then he said, he, mom, she's dead. And we said, yes. And he closed his eyes. And he can move his head, he moved his head. And he said, God knows. I think the reason why you had that time with your dad is so that when he left, mm -hmm. because we were all believing for his healing, right. but I think there was probably a part of him that wanted to be with mm -hmm. yeah, your mom. Have, I can imagine, you know. 39 years? 39 years, you know, and, uh, yeah. just losing that person, not being able to go to the funeral of your wife. Right. Don't know, you know, because I picked out everything, did everything for my mother's funeral and, and uh, DJ's. And then I would show it to him later to get his approval on it, but not knowing who was going to preach it, who was there, where she was buried at, not being able to view her. You know, can you imagine? And his main concern, like when we got him to the rehabilitation place, would be to get him ready on Saturday. We went from Saturday night to get him ready for Sunday to be wheeled into the church. He always wow. wanted to just come to church. As long as he could just come to church, he'd be all right. Wow. So I used to get him ready Sunday mornings. He would be up like a kid on the first day of school. Wow. And uh, that know, was his love. Him. Yeah. It was his passion. You have four other siblings. Why do you think the mantle fell on you to, to pastor? I mean, well, being I'm the only one that played the organ. We're all musicians, but I played the organ. So playing the organ, my father played the organ mm -hmm. as well for years behind Bishop Washington. Okay. So he kind of took to me. And that, and that musical aspect, because I wasn't a drummer or a bass player. So when he would travel, he wouldn't need to take the other ones with him. Right. He would just take the organist. Got you. So everywhere he went, I went. Wow. Everywhere he went, even places I didn't even want to go. David, I got to go to Switchback, Louisiana. Come <laughs> with me. Right. So so this whole time, you know, you're, 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 go you're traveling with your dad, but you never, ever imagined how valuable that time would be. Never did. Because all that time was preparing me for what I'm in now. Wow. You know, just sitting sitting there listening to him take the calls of the different members and how to deal with their problems. Right. And I wasn't supposed to be that ain't my business. Right. But I was being nosy anyway. So now I know how to deal with certain stuff that come my way as a pastor now. Wow. That's awesome. And I never know that I never knew I was being prepared for this cuz I thought that my dad, because my grandfather lived to be 85, mm. and I thought my father had another good 20 years in him. And we don't even think like that. We right. just think of our our, our parents and, and our loved ones just living forever. Yeah. But everything that has happened to the Wright brothers, everything that happened in my life, I lost my, my mom, my dad, you know, my son, my marriage due to whatever complications may occur then. And, you know, I see my other two children every now and then, but with all that that's happened to Danny Wright, I'm still standing for some reason. I'm still standing and God is still, God is still good. God is still good and he's going to continue to be good. And Your dad you know, had a song said, you must come in at the you door. You must come in at the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's I it. love that song. Uh -huh. You must come in at the door. Yes, sir. And you know, I just want to say this to someone that's lost somebody. Mm -hmm. If you've ever lost anybody, it's important that you know God because mm -hmm. you will see them again. Yes. And you know that mm -hmm. you're going to see First Lady Betty Wright, Mama oh, yes. Betty Wright again. Oh, yes. And you know you're going to see Dad again. Oh, yes. You're going to see Nephew. Nephew, DJ, that's, that was my boy. Yes, sir. You know, and my dad and, and my mom. I'm going to see him again. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. For the rest of my life.